Farlands is a free game on Oculus Home, which is best described as Animal Crossing meets Viva Pinata meets Pokemon Snap. The game features five total planets with one extra area on the fifth planet. Three of these are richer planets with small areas to explore and creatures to interact with, while the other two are minor planets with specific functions, such as the garden where you grow fruit. You start off on only one planet, and after wildlife research, you can raise your rank to unlock different planets, with the rate of unlocking only one planet a day. The story is fairly straightforward, as you're an alien researcher followed around by your robot companion Zoe, played by Maria Bamford, who you might recognize from Tim and Eric. While sometimes she's entertaining, Zoe can start to give off the Navi effect pretty quickly after hearing the same lines constantly being repeated. Your goal is to collect photographs and report them to the alien head of this research, Dr. Klug, who's played by David Hayter, who also voices Solid Snake in the Metal Gear franchise. The very end of the game is based on obtaining artifacts, which are used to piece the story of the creatures together. As far as I can tell, these artifacts can only be obtained by creatures randomly throwing these up, so it makes the end game very tedious. And because of this, I haven't actually finished the game. I've unlocked every planet, but unless I'm missing something, fully completing the story is just based on random chance while caring for your creatures, which is something you can only do once a day. The gameplay for this is extremely easy to pick up on and almost painfully simple. You move around by walking naturally and teleportation. I like this because it lets your play space be very flexible. You can play this completely seated down in your chair or you can use your entire room to your advantage and walk around like that. As a researcher, your job is to feed the aliens, as well as photograph different bugs, fish, plants, and the alien behaviors to increase your rank and unlock all the planets. The game features a 24-hour real-time day and night cycle, as well as a weather system. This helps add some freshness to the simple yet beautiful environments. Thankfully, the creatures are really cool and unique. The bird-like wibwams sometimes ask you to mimic them in a sort of Simon Says type game, and they'll occasionally mimic your own voice, which is really cool to hear. The ape-like colorons will ask you to participate in their daily ritual as well, which is basically like completing yoga with a VR headset on. The visuals on this game are definitely one of its strong suits. This game is beautiful, and I would go as far as to say that it's one of the best looking games in VR right now. Everything from the environments to the creatures just looks absolutely stunning and super lifelike. It's the kind of place you want to relax in for hours. The creatures themselves are really well designed too. The animations and just details, you can tell there was a lot of thought put into that to make them seem incredibly lifelike. It's almost like you're at a zoo. The theme of a lot of these planets makes it look like Jim Henson had some hand in helping create them. The first thing I thought when I saw these plants was that they reminded me of the helping hands in the labyrinth. There's also something particularly about the colorons and their eyes that just makes me feel like I'm living in a Jim Henson film. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this game, because while there is beautiful environments and everything feels insanely polished, it just feels incredibly lacking at the same time. For a free game that was made by a team in 8 months, it's kind of hard to complain, but I still want more. This game has crazy potential, especially when thinking about adding in multiplayer or touch controls. I don't think I've ever experienced this with a game I've ever played before, but it's like I've never loved a game so much, but then been so frustrated at the lack of content and just there's so much more that the game could have been. If they were to re-release this game as fully fleshed out with touch controls and everything, or if they were to add some sort of DLC content, I would gladly pay $50 for a high quality experience of this. I think the game is a must play, but it won't leave you with much after you've completed everything. Thanks for watching my Farlands review guys, if you liked it, let me know by leaving a like down below, and subscribe for more VR videos. If you'd like to see any of the videos shown on the screen right now, simply click them and the annotation will take you to that video. Feel free to follow me on Twitter as well, for updates about videos and future live streams.